Hi ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are doing amazing today uh, in another video, okay? So, um, I wasn't going to make this particular video, you know, but I decided to anyways. I decided that this topic was very important to talk about, to discuss, right? Because, uh, you know, I think uh, in the way that a lot of people have been conditioned to live and... Uh, you know, because uh, a lot of people are living very much from their egos, right? And on the surface, um, without really digging too much into the depth uh, of themselves, right? And I think because of that, I think, um, I think a lot of people are suffering, okay? And so, um, you know, and, and people are depressed, right? Besides the demonic entities, <laughs> which we're not going to talk about today, of course, right? I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to put that aside, okay? Although I do I do definitely think that there's a spiritual aspect to this, okay? And, um, you know, if you are going through depression, for example, the dark entities might uh, definitely contribute. If you're oppressed, you know, by them, they're going to whisper thoughts into your head, right? And the thoughts you, that, that you think are yours, they're actually not yours. You know, so, um, you know, there's that, right? But we, we will not really discuss this because I don't think that's, uh, um, that it's that important, I guess, here, right? In terms of depression, right? And we will discuss depression in this video, okay? And, and um, how you can overcome depression, you know? And, and uh, guys... Uh, I will sh I will be sharing as we uh, go through this journey of, you know, um, me putting out videos, right? Uh, and I will just, uh, I will discuss a lot of uh, stories from my own life. And it doesn't really have too much to do with me even, right? It's just, I think giving you stories kind of makes me a little bit more relatable, you know? And so perhaps you can take something from my stories, you know, and... Um, I don't know, get inspired, right? Or maybe it will give you some kind of motivation and, or maybe it will just give you an example, right, of what's happening. So that's the reason why I share my stories for the most part, you know? It's not really about me, you know? It's really just about you, you know, honestly. And um, so, and I think, share, uh, you know, sharing stories uh, kind of, once again, right, it helps, um, it helps my point. It helps me get my points across and also it makes the, um, the the content itself seem a little bit less dry you know so um, we all have stories to share you know and that's beautiful right and so um, yes I, I you know that's why I'm going to share my story too here you know I'm gonna share my story about depression right and how I was depressed right and so and um, you know for those of you that are struggling with depression I can help you get out of your depression because, of course, at the end of the day, you're the one that has to rescue yourself, right? And so, um, you know, God is very good also, right? God is so good. God is so great that, um, you know, even when you're operating at your lowest consciousness right in your fear based state through your ego from your ego right uh we've all been there right um you will you might not notice what you know the people that god sends into your life but more often than not the god will send uh people into your life if things just become unbearable you know if things, if this situation just becomes unbearable and you don't think you can do it anymore on your own and God doesn't think so, then he will send help your way. He will send help, you know, and uh, these people will come into your life and they will help you, okay? In most cases, emotionally, sometimes physically, you know, uh, and then they will help you. Then you'll get back up on your feet and then they'll leave. You know, and you'll just think it's a random coincidence. You, you might, you know, your ego might blame it on something else. The, the fact that they left, you know, maybe you'll blame it on yourself. Like, oh, uh, I'm not good enough for this person. Or, uh, you know, 
or on something like this, right? You will take uh, you will take it personally, but really, in reality, this person just came into your life just to help you. You know, uh, I, I think I will make a separate video about this, right? But I've had this happen to me many times in my life, and guys, the only reason the the only um, not reason, but like uh, I was a only able to see it later on. You know, at the time I didn't see it as I took everything personally, you know, so when you're operating from your ego, everything it becomes personal. Everything becomes personal, right? So you take things personally and uh, that makes life a lot harder, you know. Um, when you're looking from, um, when you're operating from your higher self, right, you don't take things as personally anymore. Things become about other people, you know, and uh, you learn how not to identify with your own thoughts anymore. You learn not to accept them, you know, for, uh, and you, you very much learn how to manage your own thoughts, right, and, and discount the negative one, you know. So during depression, what happens, right, is that, um, well, first of all, right, I think, once again, it stems back from your childhood, right? So everything goes back to your childhood, right? And so many of us have been, you know, abused in the past, right? Many of us have been in abus abusive relationships with our parents, right? And we thought that everything that we were experiencing was normal because we didn't know any better, right? We didn't have any good role models, you know? So... Guys, when I was growing up, um, first of all, my mom, right, when she went to America, she left. My, first of all, my, my parents got divorced really, really early on, right? And uh, the first painful experience for me during the was during the divorce. I was very little, right? But I very much understood what was happening. And the judge asked us, you know, um, the judge asked... Uh, uh, my dad, who he wanted, you know, to, to take me and my, my brother, right? And uh, my dad, you know, he, he decided to take my brother, okay? And <laughs> of course, you know, I was very little, right? But I still understood. And that hurt me so, so much, you know? He didn't want me, right? He wanted my brother. And uh, I definitely took it personally, you know, I was extremely upset by that. And I think that was my first wound, you know, that was my first hu huge wound. And it was the fact that my dad was choosing my brother and not me, you know. And uh, so, so yeah, there was that, right? And uh, then they got divorced, right? I also remember a fight that they had. It was a huge, huge fight. And my mom took a huge, huge rock. And I think it was... Uh, they were on the highway just fighting, verbally fighting, I think physically fighting too, right? And so my mom, she just gets out of the car, I think. She takes one giant rock and she just throws it at his car, right? And so I was like shocked, right? I also remember my dad hitting my mom, you know? And I think he gave her a bruise or something, right? But at that point, I was so angry with my dad, you know? And um, I just felt terrible for my mom. She was crying, right? And um, it was then that I decided that I wanted to stay with my mom, you know. Uh, I was just very, very, you know, so this was a very painful experience for me, right? So, you guys, everything stem stems from your childhood, right? And so, uh, you know, the, the wounds start in your childhood and then they continue, right? And then, of course, it turns into depression because you've built an ego, right? And your ego is your full self, right? It's your self that, that, is, that you made, right? It's a defense mechanism that you've created to protect yourself from getting hurt even more, right? Um, the pain was unbearable. You couldn't stand it any longer. So you, you, you learn to create a false, a false image, right, of yourself. You've created the false image of yourself, right? And this false image is exactly what's keeping you from connecting to other people. It's what's keeping you from living in your authenticity, right? It's what's keeping you from, um, you know, it's what's keeping you um, 
stuck basically and depressed and anxious, right? Because you're not living your life. You're living your, your life in, uh, uh, from someone else's expe expectations of you. You're living your life because someone else want, uh, you know, sees, it, sees what you're doing as acceptable. You know, so that's, that's the problem with your ego, right? And so when we're living from our ego, right, we're never happy. We're disconnected from ourselves, from our own soul, from our own emotions. And of course, <laughs> your soul is going to let you know about this, right? You're going to start getting depressed. Uh, you know, whenever we're living, we're going, we're heading in the wrong direction, you know, uh, we're going to, we're going to feel extremely terrible about that, you know, and so this is exactly what happened, right? So guys, back to the story with my, my family, right? So, um, I basically, right, um, I, um, um, my mom, um, she, she decided to go to America, right, after that. So she left, right? She left us with some random family guys, okay? Nobody wanted us. Our dad didn't want us, right? Uh, my grandma only said that she could take us, you know, uh, because she had her own business. She, she also had a lot of issues at that time. That's what she said, right? So, uh, you know, I understand that, right? So my grandma said, which was also kind of her, right? you know, I would say, um that she will take us every weekend and guys believe it or not that really really saved us you know because um uh, my mom she had a friend uh, she met a girl in uh, in her dance class right and that girl had a family so my mom just randomly asked knowing my mom you know she's an arc right and and um she she just randomly asked this girl to look after us and uh, it was only supposed to be for a couple of months, right? But I think it turned into like five years. <laughs> okay, so that's really, really crazy, right? And so we lived with this other family, right? And this other family had, you know, this woman, right? This other woman, this other guy, right? Her husband and two other children, right? Around our age, a little bit older, right? And so there was a guy and a girl, right? And so... The family was extremely, extremely dysfunctional, okay? The guy uh, ended up being uh, also a psychopath, okay? And he was a drunk, an alcoholic, okay? And so he tortured us, like mentally tortured us. He didn't physically abuse us, you know? Not that I recall, right? But he mentally tortured us. Like, one time... Um, one time he placed the bucket on a table, right? And the bucket of, of cold water. And he made me do math problems, right? And he said, if I fell asleep, uh, then he would pour it on my head. All right, guys, I was a kid then. Like, <laughs> I was literally like seven, maybe, you know, seven, yeah, seven or eight, right? And so I couldn't figure out those math problems because I didn't understand them, right? And so he made me sit like this, trying to solve this math problem all night long, okay? And uh, he made me go to school without sleeping, you know? And so <laughs> that was just terrible. That's just so, so cruel, right? And terrible. And yeah, we were basically, we were treated like second-class citizens, you know? He didn't physically hurt us, thank goodness, right? But... Um, the guy very much, the other guy picked, sometimes ended up picking on my brother, he tried to pick on me, although I stood up for myself, right, and so, um, for the most part, we, we were okay, we were, uh, we had a good relationship with him, me, me and him, right, but n not him and, and my brother, right, um, so, yeah, there, there was that, right, and so, uh, yeah, it was, it was hell growing up, guys, also, not only that, but, they ended up pocketing the money that my mom was sending, right? And so, I don't know what they did with the money, right? But we always had no food, right, guys? And so we grew up, like, always starving, always hungry. So every time we would get to our grandmother's house, we would just take all the food. Like, I once ate, like, a, um, a huge jar like this of, like, olives, literally, okay? Because I was so hungry. I was just always starving, right? Uh, we had to, like, even, like, steal fruits and vegetables, guys, because we were so hungry, okay? And, and uh, 
you know, of course it's wrong, right? But we, we had to survive. We had nothing, you know. We, we barely had anything to eat. They cooked, of course, right? But it was just never enough. And sometimes we didn't have anything to eat. They would just say that, oh, your mom didn't send money or, you know. So I, I just, um, also when my mom would send stuff, right? Uh, a lot of stuff would end up going to her son and, and not my brother, you know. So they would take all the good clothes. Anyway, so I found, found, found out about this you know, a little bit later on, of course, and I was really surprised, you know, and um, I was a bit disappointed and disgusted, right, with them, and, uh, but the aunt, like, she was like our aunt, right, she was, in a way, in a sense, she was a godsend, too, because she was a kind lady, she was, she was an enabler, enabler, right, but she was, um, you know, but she was, um, extremely, she had extremely low self-esteem herself. She was getting, you know, verbally abused, physically abused, right? The the guy would just attack his family all the time. We would see this play playing out, you know? Just imagine, like, kids just seeing this, right? And so, yeah, we just, you know, we got to kind of have this really, really weird, very strange experience, you know? And we basically grew up really, really poor at that time, you know? We... Um, wh while being without our mom, right? And so then, of course, you know, my mom, she um, she took us, finally, she took us to America, right? And, of course, over there, we went from, you know, being dirt poor to basically from having nothing to eat, right? And just starving all the time to to having everything, basically, right? To having a beautiful room, to having a beautiful house with a swimming pool, you know, and... Basically, it was just like our whole life was just flipped upside down, right? We moved to Florida. And so so things definitely changed in terms of finances, right? And physically speaking, but the, the you know, the chaos, the psychological, the emotional chaos continued, you know? And, and uh, you know, because my mom was a narcissist, a psychopath maybe even, you know? So, so we basically you know, and I will discuss this a bit later, you know, going from uh, being extremely poor to bec being uh, relatively wealthy, right? I would say pretty wealthy, right? So, so this, there was a, co a huge contrast there, you know, so I got to experience that, right? But anyways, but back to depression, right, guys? So, of course, my ego was huge at some point, right? My ego was huge. Uh, I, um, I acted like I didn't care about anything, you know, and, and when you're depressed like this, right, when, I mean, when you're, um, when you have a huge ego, the bigger your ego is, the, the more problems you have, okay? Of course, your ego is going to push people away, right? You're always going to be competing against people. Uh, you're, there's never any connection, any genuine connection that you're craving, right? And so, of course, sooner or later, depression is going to hit, Okay. Uh, because you're going to do everything for that image, right? You're going to go get that money. You're going to try to go get that money. You're going to try to get that beautiful job. Uh, you know, you're going to try to get that best car, right? Just so you can impress uh, everyone around you because you care so much about your image, right? And so this is exactly what happened to me, guys. You know, uh, I... Um, um, I got, eventually, you know, I, uh, started becoming this image that I thought that would get me to be accepted by everyone around me, right? So, I, I wanted to be loved, I wanted to be admired, I, I, you know, I became a model, right? I, uh, uh, started dressing a certain way, right? I, I even got a plastic surgery, you know, and, and that was a terrible mistake. Of course, I corrected it later on, right? Thank God. But I just started becoming less and less and less and less of myself. And that got me de more depressed, okay, guys? I was just so completely disconnected, right? The person that I actually was and the image that I was trying to create was just getting me farther and farther removed from myself. And that, of course, started creating all kinds of psychological problems, right? Such as depression, right? And so there was a disconnect in my work and the work that I was doing because I was just trying to get that money, right? There was a disconnect uh, that had to, 
had to do with my friends, you know, the circles that I was in, right? The things that I was doing, you know, like partying and things like that, right? And, and uh, um, even in school, you know, even in business school, I didn't really want to go to business school. Um, I, it was from, just strictly from my ego, I was trying to prove something to myself. I was put down so much as a kid, right, uh, that I was like, well, I'm going to prove that I'm good at math, right? And I'm, 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 a, I'm a very intelligent and I'm going to go and I'm going to go into business school, right? And I'm going to graduate and, and, you know. And so I, I, there was always something that I had to prove, prove, to prove to myself, right? And so in a sense, right, there becomes this disconnect from your soul and uh, your ego. So there's like two personalities within you, right? And you guys are like fighting against one another. And it's like, it becomes this like war with that's within, right? And so, of course, the ego, for the most part, always wins, right? And so, um, and depression is your way of pointing you inwards. And it's your wake up call in a sense. It's like, hey, you know, it's your soul trying to wake you up. Like, hey, buddy, look, look at what's happening, you know. Um, look at what's going on. You're not living the life that you're supposed to live. You know, you're in the wrong path. You're in the wrong path. You're, uh, you're going the wrong way. You know, slow down and, and think about this and, and turn around. Start making better decisions. Start, start trusting yourself and your intuition. Try, start to to do the things that you actually like doing rather than always fighting against yourself and, and doing the things that you hate just so you can look good. Sorry, it just got kind of like hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyways, but um, yeah, so back to depression, right? So depression is, you know, you, ha um, you have to realize that you basically kind of like buried yourself, right? And so depression is like your... Um, it's pain, right? It's really, really painful. When you're going through depression, it's you're experiencing a lot of pain, right? And pain is actually a good thing, right, guys? In the body, right? When you're experiencing pain, right? If you didn't experience pain, guys, you would die, okay? You would literally die, right? Like if you broke something, let's just say you broke something, right? If you didn't know something was broken, right? Or if you were bleeding or something, or, you know, you, if you didn't know there was pain, right? You would have gotten an infection, right? And or you would have bled internally, right? And, and, and that's it, right? You would have died. So same applies to depression here, only mentally, right? Depression is, is necessary. It's needed, okay? And it is your, it's kind of like, it's something that's trying to wake you up, okay? It's trying to wake you up from, from um, you know, from going into the wrong direction, okay? It's telling you, hey, a body or you know woman <laughs> you know you you're disconnected you've been disconnected for far too long and i need you to connect i need you to look within and to see what what you need to heal you know i remember guys and and you know what it doesn't matter guys like believe it or not for those of you who have experienced home abuse with their parents right a lot of uh, uh, depression often starts around when you're a teen Okay, and it's terrible because it makes you feel like you're you've died. It makes you feel like you're dead. Okay, you, you're you're so young, right? You're so fresh, so vibrant, right? But your energy sure isn't. You know, uh, you're operating from a very low frequency, right? You are, and you feel very very dead, very much dead inside. Okay, you feel like you don't want to live anymore. You feel like you know, uh, it's the end for you, right? I just remember, like, um, I had a nice place, right? And uh, I was living, like, right next to, um, you know, my school, my, my uni, right? And I just didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I was just laying on the bed, and I just wanted to die. I, I just didn't want to do anything. I didn't have any motivation, you know? Uh, and I just... I felt completely just, just, just drained, you know, uh, and of course I was, of course I was, because I was in the wrong relationship, okay, the guy was pretty much the same, he was just as lost as me, because when you're very lost, you can't possibly attract someone who is, you know, <laughs> like an emperor, someone who is your, 
you know, who knows who they are, right, who is operating at a high frequency, you can't, right? If you're low vibrational yourself, right, you can't attract a high vibrational person. That's not a match, right? It's not going to work. It's He's not going to go for you and you're not, you know, or she's not going to go for you, right? Because uh, they know who they are, right? They're on the right track. They might like, they might help you, right? Uh, they might help you in a certain way, right? But they're not going to want to be in a relationship with you, you know? So there's that, right, guys? So, um, so yes, guys, you know, um, and so, yeah, I was like around 18 at the time, you know, and I felt like I was just dead, you know, I like I was dead, like life ended and that's it, right? It was the beginning, like technically it was the beginning of my life, right? But I felt like it was the end. Okay, and so it was much, much later, guys, that I was actually able to come out of my depression. And that was actually, was that was the beginning of my life, okay? Uh, it was definitely, um, it was definitely when I started connecting to my soul more. It was when I started making changes, like positive changes. It was when I started listening to my intuition, right? It was when I stopped listening to the inner thoughts, perhaps demonic, okay, coming from dark entities, right? Um, it was when I neutralized the negative thoughts that were coming in, you know? It was when I um, accepted myself and stopped giving a damn about what other people thought of me. You know, it was then that my life started, you know, and so um, there's that, right? So guys, if you think that antidepressants will solve your depression, no, <laughs> you're depressed because you're disconnected from your soul. You're not listening to yourself. You want to go a certain way, but you're scared, you know, so you're you're in this fear based mode, right? You're scared to to go after your dreams, you know, and something is stopping you, right? There's fear, but why is, why is there fear, right? The fear could, could possibly relate to your childhood wounds, right? Because the, the fear could possibly have something to do with your low self-esteem that you developed while you were at home, right? Because your parents told you that you weren't good enough, that you weren't attractive enough, that you weren't intelligent enough, right? And so on, right? So guys, like, um, that's, you know, that's pretty much what you have to do. You see, you have to go inwards, right? And you have to, um, you have to start listening to what you truly, truly desire and want. And you have to start making small changes in order to get there. You know, if you have to, um, uh, if you have to improve your self-esteem, okay, then, uh, you know, first of all, of course, it starts with your thoughts, right? So you, you can start with small affirmations. I am good enough. I am worthy, you know. I am loved, right? I am amazing, you know. I am God's child and God loves me. I don't need anyone but God and myself, okay? Um, I know that my depression also had something to do with my parents, with accepting the fact that nobody in my family was there for me. You know, I reached out to my brother, right, when I was really depressed, and I remember him just shutting me down. Like, oh, get over it, <laughs> you know? And so the fact that he was just so ruthless with me at my most vulnerable, right, it just made me feel so small and unseen, you know? And so that made me even more depressed. And so... um yeah, you know, it, just just remember that, you know, when your family isn't there for you, you're going to have strangers who are there for you, okay? You're going to have strangers, you're going to have God, okay? God, uh, those strangers will be operating from, or God will operate from those strangers, okay? So he will use those strangers, okay, to, to help you, to guide you, to be your friend, to be your guide, to to protect you, you know, to provide for you sometimes, you know. So uh, you're never alone, okay? You're never alone, never alone, okay? And, and your depression, um, when you're in this dark place, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, um, it's gonna feel like you're all alone, right? And all these negative thoughts will pop into your head, and 
tell you you're not good, you're not going to make it, you're not smart enough, not good enough, right? Don't believe them. <laughs> Don't believe them. Think of instances in the past when you were, you know, good enough, when you, when you did something great, when you managed to do something. And, and you know what? Doing something, going after your dreams, right? Building that self-esteem. That, that's Actually, that's going to build your self-esteem is by going after something that you're afraid to go after, okay? So sometimes, you know, uh, fear, facing fear starts with your thoughts, right? But also, of course, you have to take action, you know? And actually, the, the best thing about this is that the more action that you will take, um, the the easier it will be to take other actions too. Okay, so the more, it's like, it's crazy, right? Because when you do like a lot of, you know, seemingly dangerous or risky things or crazy things, right? Uh, as, I don't know, they're seen maybe externally by others, right? Then you will realize that you're fear, you're now like super fearless, you know? You, you don't care about anything. You're just like, you can do anything. You know, so your confidence just builds and builds and builds to the point of like, just, you feel like you're unstoppable. You know, so this is the beautiful thing. You can go from depressed and feeling worthless and and low and stupid and, and just, just not good, right? To just becoming your the best version of yourself, to loving yourself and to respecting yourself. And so this is possible. It's definitely possible. It just, it will take work on your end, okay? It will take work. It will take facing fears, you know, facing your demons, basically, okay? And so, so yeah, you know what? If I did this, guys, anyone can do it. I know all of you can do it. Okay, guys, I don't, I don't come from a family, from a stable, healthy fa family, okay? I don't come from, uh, you know, even a, a rich family, okay? So, uh, you know, so, so yeah, I just, you know, um, I've experienced both, of course, right? But um, I left my house when I was like 15, 16, I don't know. Yeah, it was like still in high school. I was still in high school when I left my house, okay? So, um, I couldn't stand it living in my house anymore. You know, my mom was just driving me mad, you know? She was mentally tormenting me. She would wake me up at night, you know? Uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. I just, uh, the mental torture was too much for me to bear, so I had to leave, you know? I had to take that leap of faith, right? And so, guys, I had to build uh, everything from scratch, most importantly, my inner, you know, my beliefs about myself, and um, and I did it, and I, I think that's wealth, you know, I think that's true wealth, because it will stay with me for the rest of my life, you know, and um, yeah, I, I know you can too, okay, so... Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's 11, 11 on the clock, okay? And, and um, I love you guys so much, okay? Um, hang in there. If you're depressed, it's your, It's not the end of the world. I know it seems like it's the end of the world, but I know that you can get through your depression, okay? Um, it's possible to get out. Uh, your depression is needed, believe it or not, as shitty as this sounds, you know? And you can, you can get out of it, okay? I, I know I, I was able to do it. It might take you a while, but it's, you know, what comes down will always go up, okay? So life is never, like, linear, okay? So uh, have a good one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm, like, really red right now. Bye.